Hello everyone, let's talk about the Bitcoin and the blockchain in this lecture. These are the topics I will be introducing to you today. I will first give you an overview of Bitcoin and blockchain technologies. Then I want to focus on Bitcoin mining process. Many people are interested in trading Bitcoins, but very few of them understand how Bitcoin was generated. You have to understand this concept because uh, once you understand uh, how it was generated, you can give it a fair evaluation when you treat Bitcoins. The most important algorithm in Bitcoin mining is called uh, proof of work. I will also introduce this technology and algorithm to you. Lastly, I want to talk about uh, the dollar values of Bitcoins and the challenges facing Bitcoins in the future. What is a Bitcoin? A Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency network designed by Satoshi Nakamoto in 2008. By the way, Nakamoto is a mysterious character or group because nobody knows who Nakamoto really is. But it doesn't matter because Bitcoin is generating a strong impact on our daily life. In 2021, more than 14% of the US population owns some types of cryptocurrencies, and the majority is Bitcoins. Mainstream companies such as Microsoft, Starbucks, and Home Depot began to accept the Bitcoins as a form of customer payments now. This is groundbreaking because this means you can basically use Bitcoin to buy merchandises and services. Many people are trading Bitcoins, right? So Bitcoin price hit all time high in terms of dollar values. It is worth more than $60,000 in 2021. Bitcoins are important, but what are they? Let's figure out. The underlying technologies of Bitcoins is blockchain technology. So before we talk about Bitcoin, let's understand what a blockchain is. As the name implies to everyone, a blockchain is a chain of blocks. What is a block? A block is just some storage space in a computer system. It's about a one megabyte computer storage space. In each block, we record the following information. Block header information, hash of a previous block header, and the, the transaction information. Let's say I want to buy a Tesla car. I use the Tesla from my friend's job via the blockchain network. Then my identity information and John's identity information will be saved as the header of the first block. Other information such as when this transaction is carried out will also be saved as the header information in the first block. Then we want to hash the header information. Here we meet a new concept, hashing. I will talk about this concept in more details later in this lecture. Now you just need to remember that hashing is a way of encrypting information, making information a secret. Notice that we only hashing the seller and the buyer's identity information and the, the time of the transaction. We don't hash, we don't encrypt the transaction itself, which means the transaction buying a Tesla car is known to everybody on the internet. But uh, nobody knows who purchased this Tesla car, who saw this Tesla car, and when this happens. This is a way to protect a blockchain network user's information privacy. At the same time, this has been taken advantage of by people with malicious intentions. That's why you can see many hackers prefer to use Bitcoin network or other types of blockchain networks to accept money in ransomware attacks 
because in a blockchain network, we know how much money is paid in one transaction, but we don't know who accepted the money. Since we can encrypt the user's identity information into secrets, we can safely save the hash of the current block header into the next block. By doing this, we can connect all the blocks in an orderly manner. And that's the reason why we call this type of a network a chain of blocks, or simply blockchain. Another feature is once we record all the transaction information into a chain of blocks, this ledger will be distributed around the internet. If you want, you can join in a blockchain network and save a copy of a blockchain information onto your computer. Once you join in the network, your computer is called a node. Why do we want to distribute the master blockchain ledger around the internet? Because we want to protect information security. Some classmates then ask the following question. Is it safe to distribute the transaction information around the internet? It is safe. As I just introduced to you, we will hash, we will encrypt the buyer and the seller's ID information into secrets. So it doesn't matter if we expose the transaction information to other people. At the same time, don't forget, there will be millions of nodes, millions of computers saving the uh, blockchain ledger information. So it's impossible for a hacker to hack every one of the blockchain ledger at the same time. By doing this, we can make sure that the information in a blockchain network is safe. Some people define a blockchain network as a peer-to-peer decentralized online ledger. This is the reason. A Bitcoin network basically uses the same processes and algorithms I just introduced to you to record the transaction information. A Bitcoin network is a very good application of a blockchain network. But a Bitcoin network is not a blockchain network. They are two different concepts. As you can see, we can apply blockchain network to other types of uh, cryptocurrencies or online ledger systems. So a blockchain concept is larger than the Bitcoin concept. A Bitcoin network is just a very good application of a blockchain technology. We just talked about a blockchain network and we said uh, a Bitcoin network is built off the blockchain technology. So what is the key feature of a Bitcoin network? I think Bitcoin mining makes Bitcoin network stand out from other blockchain technologies. Let's talk about Bitcoin mining. Also, it is called a mining. A Bitcoin mining process is really not you dig a hole on the ground and mine something out of the ground. It is actually a process of validating new blocks if someone wants to add this new block into the blockchain inside of a Bitcoin network. If someone wants to add a new block into the blockchain, he or she needs to show proof of work to the network. The algorithm is the first miner who finds a hash output that is less than or equal to the target hash can add the new block into the blockchain inside of a Bitcoin network and will be rewarded with the corresponding Bitcoins. It sounds complicated, right? But it's not. Let me give you a very intuitive example. Suppose I'm playing a game with my friend. I write down a secret number on a paper. He writes down a number as well. Then we open our numbers. If his number is less than or equal to mine, he gets $10 as a reward. If his number is larger than mine, he gets nothing. This is a showcase of uh, the basic idea 
of proof of work. Now let's go back to the blockchain network. If I want to add a new block into a Bitcoin blockchain, I have to give a hash code to the new block. Then I want to compare this hash code with the hash code of the previous block in the blockchain. My new block will only be added into the blockchain if the hash code of the new block is less than or equal to the hash code in the previous block. This is the proof of work process in a Bitcoin network. This rule is very similar to the game I just introduced to you, right? But uh, in the proof of work process in a Bitcoin network, they don't compare just simply numbers, they compare hash codes. So what is a hash code? Let's talk about hashing. A hashing function is a computer program that transforms a decimal number into a 64-digit hexadecimal number. For example, if I type in number 334 into a hashing function, number 334 will be translated into a very long hash code, as you can see on this slide. It is very challenging to find a, a new hash code that is less than or equal to this very long hash code on this slide. Especially, you want to be the first miner among millions of miners in the world to find that qualified new hash code. It's time consuming and energy consuming. You have to use high-speed computer to find that new hash code that is less than or equal to this very long hash code. We need to reward the miners who can find the qualified new hash codes. The way is to give them some uh, virtual artificial bitcoins once they find the new hash code. In other words, once they can contribute new blocks into a bitcoin network. Here I use double quotes to include bitcoins because they are not real coins. They are just some uh, virtual artificial credits given to the successful miners, to the miners who can add new blocks into a Bitcoin network. These bitcoins are nothing, right? They are generated from the thin air. It's like uh, you play a game. After you kill the big boss, you will be given a box of goals. But those goals are not real goals. Those are just some virtual credits, virtual awards given to you. Same thing happens in the Bitcoin network. Once the miner contributes a new block into the Bitcoin chain, he or she will be given some virtual artificial credits or Bitcoins in order to reward their contribution. As of May 2020, if you can add a new block into the Bitcoin network, you will be given 6.25 Bitcoins. At this point, you should have a better understanding about why Bitcoins are different from blockchain technology because Bitcoins are basically some virtual credits given to the Bitcoin miners. And a blockchain is an online ledger system. So there are two different concepts. Now let's talk about why Bitcoins are so expensive in terms of dollars. As we just said, Bitcoin doesn't have any value. The real reason Bitcoins are so expensive Ironically, it's the monetary policies from the governments. To deal with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, governments around the world injected trillions of dollars into the market. The consequences and the concerns are inflation. If a government issues more money, the bills become less valuable. In other words, people have to spend more money to buy the same stuff. At this moment, the Bitcoin advocate said, 
if both the government's money and the bitcoins are generated from the thin air, bitcoin is better. Because when people use bitcoin to conduct the transactions, they don't have to pay a fee to the bank. And the bitcoin transactions are very quick, like a 5 minutes down quick. So bitcoins should be more valuable. That's why Bitcoin become more expensive in terms of dollars, especially in terms of the US dollars. Is Bitcoin really better? Is Bitcoin really worth $60,000 per Bitcoin? You tell me. Comment down below.